Hi guys, welcome to another video with me, Jessica the Plant Killer. I am currently in Tomball, Texas. I just moved here a few days ago, so this is the first time I will be recording in my parents' kitchen. Look for more videos to come that will be in this kitchen. It's a lot bigger than what I'm used to, and you're gonna have my parents in the background and making appearances for sure and being a distraction. So it'll be real fun! For this video, I want to share something with you guys that I think is very relevant right now, and that is how to keep your food fresher for longer. So let's jump right into it. These are a lot of tips and tricks that I honestly don't have some experience with. I do with a few of them, but some are brand new for me, so I'm really excited to share them with you. I'm going to be talking about meat and dairy in this video, even though I am vegan and I cook only vegan recipes because I know that most people in the world right now are eating meat and dairy and have stocked up. The first big epiphany for me uh, after doing some research is the best buy labels, expiration, and use by dates. So the best before dates are actually recommendations. When you see a best before date, it means that it will be at its prime and peak ripeness and freshness on that date. It doesn't necessarily mean it will be dangerous to eat afterwards. Where an expiration or a used by date actually means that you should keep an eye on it after that date if you still want to consume it because it could be potentially dangerous for you. So you want to use the visual and the smell method if you want to risk eating something after an expiration date. But don't be afraid of that best before date or throw it away because that just means it's going to be at its peak ripeness. For the next tip, when it's coming to that time of it is about to go bad, you know you need to use it up, you want to be sure to cook the meat and vegetables. I find what really works well for me when my vegetables are about to go bad, I will make a soup because it's easy to just throw everything together, make everything in a batch, and it can make your vegetables last for up to seven days longer after you cook. My next tip has to do with cheese. With cheese, I mean, I know a lot of people are obsessed with their cheese. I am with my vegan cheese whenever I come across a good one, which is kind of hard to come by. But you want to make sure that you don't keep it in foil or plastic. And this is often what cheese comes in from the grocery store. So what you want to do is you want to re remove your cheese and put it in a paper bag. Wrap it in some type of paper wax paper, uh, parchment paper, or even something that's designated cheese paper. What this does is it prevents the moisture from building up on the cheese and causing it to be wet to go bad quicker. You need something that's breathable and that's why paper bags work really well to wrap your cheese in. I'm very familiar with this next tip. Whenever it comes to cilantro, green onions, other root vegetables, basil, some type of herbs, put a little bit of distilled water in the bottom of a glass jar or a cup and place the stems, like you would with flowers, into the cup and place it in the refrigerator with light plastic covering the top of the vegetables. This helps it stay fresh longer and also even continue to grow. I actually leave my green onions out on the countertop for some reason rather than the refrigerator. They stay fresh and grow like weeds on the counter and outside of the refrigerator. Also with vegetables, if you usually buy your carrots or your beets or any other vegetables with the roots still attached to the top of them, so like the green leaves and everything still attached, You'd be surprised, but these roots actually steal the nutrients out of the vegetables. So it's better once you bring your vegetables home that you cut those tops off and then store them in the refrigerator. With vegetables like broccoli and celery, you can keep these good for up to four weeks by wrapping them in foil. So cut off the ends of your celery, wrap them up really good in foil, and store away in the refrigerator. And they will still remain nice and crisp. This next tip is kind of crazy to me because I have never done it before, but I'm totally going to start. I love onions. If you're an onion lover like me and you like to stock up 
but you want them to last a long time, maybe because you go out of town or something, get a pair of pantyhose. You wanna make sure they're clean, of course, or new. Uh, I recommend just grabbing some old ones that you could find so you don't have to buy new ones. But you place the onion at the very bottom into the foot. You tie a knot right above the onion, and then you put a new onion in and tie a knot above that one. And then what you do once you have all your onions in the pantyhose, you go and hang them in a cool, dark, dry place, like whether in the pantry uh, or in a closet somewhere. And they can stay good for up to eight months, which is crazy. Now for those berry lovers like me out there who don't always like frozen fruit, and you want your fresh blueberries, blackberries, strawberries to last for a while because you buy them in bulk, say from Costco like me. Once you receive your berries, it's good to get one part vinegar, three parts water, and to rinse them thoroughly. And what this does is it helps get rid of any bacteria that's on the berries that could produce mold once they begin to sit for a while in your refrigerator. When you bring your groceries home, rather than washing all your vegetables and putting them in the refrigerator, put them right in and don't wash your vegetables until right before you actually use them. Adding that white water moisture to your vegetables from the beginning actually helps them to go bad a lot quicker. Now, I don't know many people who don't like avocados. I buy two huge batches of them, usually at a time, from Costco. And I will keep the harder ones in the refrigerator until I go through my first batch of avocados. And what you wanna do is, whenever they are out of the refrigerator, it helps them to ripen a lot quicker. Once they reach that point of a little bit squishy, that's when you wanna put them in the refrigerator to slow down the ripening. And then once you finish off those avocados, then that's whenever you place your harder batch from the refrigerator out on the window seal where it's room temperature to allow them to go through the process of ripening. Also, once you cut open an avocado, you wanna make sure that the half that you keep stored in the refrigerator keeps the seed in it. You can also put a layer of lemon juice on top of the avocado and that'll help it stay fresher and keep it from browning also. Bananas. For your bananas, when you keep them bunched up, each time that you remove a banana, banana, a banana from that bunch, it will ripen quicker. So the ones that you keep bunched up, say you want to slow them from getting brown, the best thing to do is to wrap a piece of plastic with a rubber band around the top of the stem. This will keep them from browning. But as soon as you separate the bananas, they will brown quicker if you are if you actually do want them to brown quicker, maybe for baking, like I use brown bananas for all the time, or to sweeten something up. Also, you wanna keep your bananas separate from everything else. So they produce an ethylene gas that can help other vegetables to ripen a lot faster, which you might not necessarily want. So if you put apples with bananas and oranges in say a jar or a bowl, they will all help each other to ripen quicker if that's something that you're wanting to do. But if you're wanting to slow the ripening process and to help your fruits last longer, keep them separate. Except in the refrigerator, it's okay to keep like apples and oranges and stuff together, but bananas need to be left alone. Mushrooms. So when you bring your mushrooms home, they usually come in this like styrofoam container wrapped in plastic. That is not ideal for your mushrooms. And I buy huge portions of these and I hate when they go bad quickly because I love my mushrooms and it's just so wasteful to throw them out. So the best way to keep these stored and fresher for a longer period of time is to immediately put them in a paper bag and that's how you store them in the refrigerator. They need to be able to breathe and not collect moisture and that's what happens whenever you wrap your vegetables in plastic. They collect this moisture. So for your plant milk or your dairy milk or even your eggs, you do not want to keep these items in the side door of your refrigerator. I know sometimes your milk can just fit perfectly in that side door, but because of you constantly opening and closing your refrigerator, the temperature is very inconsistent in the door. 
So you wanna store it right in the middle or below where the temperature is constantly cool. Now, I ate meat for 30 years, so this is not foreign to me, even though it's been almost three since I've eaten it. And I remember that I always would keep my meat in the freezer. And make sure you do your research on how long meat is good for in the freezer because it's not forever and they don't all have the same dates of staying good. And so when it comes to uncooked poultry parts, they stay good for up to nine months. Uh, if it's uncooked poultry as a whole, it can stay good for up to a year. And uncooked meat can also stay good from, depending what it is, two months to a year. So be sure to do your research before just taking meat from the very back of your freezer and cooking it and eating it. Make sure that it's still good. Ginger. So I read that ginger, I usually get this in bulk also and it goes bad, or I just don't use it as soon as I thought I would and it starts to get green and grow mold on it and I end up throwing it out. But how to keep ginger staying fresh is actually putting it in a plastic bag. With bread, you do not ever want to put bread in your refrigerator. What you want to do is Say you have a loaf of bread and you might go through it slowly, you can keep half of it out and then put the other half in a plastic bag in the freezer and it can stay good for up to three months. And to keep bread fresh on the counter, it's best to actually put it in a paper bag with a paper towel. You'd be surprised, but cucumbers actually don't do that well refrigerated. They would do better on your countertops. They can get cold injury pretty quickly after a few days from all of the moisture in the refrigerator. So it's actually better to keep them out on your counter. This might be difficult right now whenever we are all very stocked uh, for the situation we're in, but it is actually best not to overstock your fridge. What happens is when everything's crammed and close together, so you have like mayonnaise in there, some other dairy products, the temperature doesn't stay consistent with them. By being crammed, there's not enough airflow to circulate and keep the temperature cool for all the items in your refrigerator. So at least if you do have a lot in your fridge, try to separate things with a little bit of gaps the best that you can. You can only do what you can if you only have one refrigerator. If you have two, utilize that second refrigerator because it will help stuff stay fresher if both your refrigerators actually work really well and do what they're supposed to, which is to stay at a certain temperature. Now, if you like to buy at Costco, like myself and my friend Cody, we constantly have this battle with our greens, like spinach and kale, because we buy these huge boxes of them and we always end up throwing some away because it goes bad and you can only eat so many greens within a week. I just discovered this and I'm really excited about it, is you put a paper towel inside with your greens in the little plastic container and you wanna remove and replace the paper towel every time it gets completely wet. Because what it does is it absorbs the moisture from your greens and that keeps them fresher, crispier, and helps them to last longer. This is genius. Well, not really, but I just discovered it and it's probably gonna change my life. I wanted to show you this really cool trick I don't know about you guys, but I use tomato paste all the time and they come in these little tiny jars that usually recipes only call for like a tablespoon, maybe a heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. And then you put it in a little container in the fridge and it gets all moldy and goes bad because you don't need it for another week or two. So the best thing to do, and I think this is so cool, is to get a plastic bag, empty out the tomato paste, flatten it out the best that you can, and then with a knife or a pencil or something that's not gonna cut open the bag, actually, you want to divide the tomato paste into grid-like sections. So you're splitting the tomato paste into different sections like this. And then what you do is you place the tomato paste into the freezer. Once you ever need this for, you know, whatever recipe that you're making, if you're like me, this happens all the time, you open up the bag, you break apart a chunk of the tomato paste and just throw that right into your skillet and it defrosts and works wonders. If you need more servings, you just break two or three out of there. I think this is so
super cool and i'm excited to start using this little trick. i know these are a lot of tips to take in at once and they seem like a lot of work and a lot of thinking but once you're in the habit of learning these little tips and tricks it will become very natural to you and not only will it just keep your food lasting longer so you don't have to go to the grocery store as often, but most importantly, it will save you money, a lot of money. It adds up over time. So it is totally worth it to try these little tips. Please, if I left something out because I'm not a complete pro at this, I've just spent some time researching and know some things that work for me, but if I left something out that you know could really help other people right now, especially in this time of need, please leave your tips in the comment section below. I know we would all appreciate it. I nerd out on stuff like this because it has to do with food, which is one of my favorite topics ever. So I really appreciate your comments and tips added to this video below. So thank you so much for watching. I'm in a new destination, onward to some really exciting places as soon as these travel bans lift, whenever that is. But I will be making videos here at my parents' house thankful so thankful to be here with them i hope that you are safe and healthy and taking really good care of yourself in your quarantine during this time and that you are able to be patient in the unknown i know it's really hard but we're all in this together so i hope that you're eating really well treat your body well because it needs it now more than ever and i will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching oh i sometimes forget to say this but it's super important please go hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber of mine, I, if you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, please also hit the notification bell because what it does is it notifies you every day on the dot whenever I upload a new YouTube video. So please give it a thumbs up also if you gained anything from this video whatsoever. Appreciate you. Peace. Come closer.